Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Oh Shoot. I'm your host, Cassidy Lynn, and today we are talking about something that we haven't talked about on the podcast before. We're talking about your why, your purpose, and kind of like the creativity behind it all. I think sometimes we can get kind of caught up in the technical things like how can I grow my business? How can I grow my social media? All of these other things. But in reality, Sometimes we have to start at the base, which is why do you do what you do? What is your purpose in doing photography? So that's what I want to cover in today's episode. And I think if you're feeling um, a little bit just worn out or kind of feel lost within your photography journey, I think this episode is going to be really good for you because I've been there and I kind of want to share a little bit of my experience and how... I overcame that feeling within my photography journey. So I think we're just going to jump right into the episode. I don't really have any life updates. Actually, I do have one. So um, I got my film photos back from my first two rolls of film. If you saw, I posted on Instagram and TikTok about it. But basically, my first two rolls were kind of just an experiment it like they they turned out good and I liked them like the photos but I learned a lot just about film photography when I got the roles developed and um, I think my third role is going to be a lot better Um, basically to sum up some of the things I learned I learned that shooting outside with a film camera is really good I'm not saying you can't shoot inside but kind of the vibe I was going for was all outdoor photos and I shot a lot of indoor photos. So I didn't really get the result that I was wanting. Um, and I also learned that, um, it's important to not be afraid to use up your film. When I first started photography, not even film photography, I was such an overshooter. And now I've gotten my digital photography to a point where I know, when I have enough shots and when I can stop shooting. But now that I am trying to shoot a little bit on film, I'm almost scared to use my shots because I know I only have like 26 on a roll. And so I, I don't want to overshoot and then be left with no, no photos left on my phone when I need it. And so I was afraid to use up my shots, but I think that's something else that I learned is don't be afraid, you know, just shoot kind of how you normally would be a little bit more specific, but don't be afraid to use up your shots when it comes to film photography. I actually have like a bunch of stuff, um, linked in my Instagram stories and, um, on my Instagram profile and like the highlight section with all of my film stuff, like my phone camera and stuff that I bought. So if you're interested in knowing about that, go and check it out. Um, but I think that is it for updates. Um, I'm just going to let you guys know if you hear, um, my dog, he's currently chewing on a toy, like right next to me. Well, not right next to me. He's on the floor. Um, so yeah. And also (laughs) this is the last thing I promise. And then we'll get into this. I am recording this podcast on visuals and audio. So if you ever wondered, like, what do I look like (laughs) when I, podcasts and I guess like to put a face with my voice you can go over to my YouTube channel and I'm going to be posting hopefully every podcast episode on YouTube as well I'm going to try my best to keep up with it I know during slow season it might be easy for me to do it but who knows I might end up not doing it for a little bit but yeah with that being said let's jump in to the content for today's episode so Today, we're talking about figuring out your why. Um, And I also want to talk a little bit about bigger picture, kind of like the things that are going to help you stay motivated as you're doing photography and really just give you that purpose. Like when when everyone starts photography, there's always a reason. And so that's kind of what I want to ground us back to and bring us back to on today's episode. So the first question that I want to ask you is why did you choose photography? So 
if you're listening right now, literally ask yourself, why, why photography? Why did I choose to pursue photography? And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to assume that you're interested in photography, but if you're not listening for photography purposes, maybe that's, this can be a question you can ask in another area of your life. Um, it could be like, why did I choose to start this business or whatever it is? So why did you choose to start photography? I want to go back to where it all started for me. Uh, it basically started with the fact that I was capturing a lot of candids. Um, I worked at a nonprofit and was shooting their events all the time. <laughs> if you're, if you're, sorry, if you're watching this visually, my dog just tried to jump up next to me and he just fell over. So it's, <laughs> it's fine. Um, okay. So I was working at a nonprofit and taking a lot of candids. And on top of that, while I was working part-time, I was also shooting portraits just kind of like on the side for fun. And what I ended up discovering was I loved the natural and unprompted part of candids, but I also really liked at the same time how I could shoot portraits and kind of put my subject exactly where I wanted them with the lighting and pose them. So I, I liked the best of both worlds. Like I wanted both of those things and both of those things really drew me into photography. So when I chose wedding photography as my niche, it was essentially me wanting to combine those two things of candid, really unprompted photography along with the portrait side of things, which I think you get both of those when you shoot weddings, which I really, really liked. So I've always loved weddings too. So when I started photography, I I I had loved I've loved weddings kind of my whole life. I've really loved attending weddings. I used to set up like decorations for weddings as one of like my part-time jobs in high school. But weddings have always been something that I've really enjoyed. So the fact that I through wedding photography am able to capture those like once in a lifetime moments for people, that was a big part of my why. It's a big part of why I do what I do. It's to capture those once in a lifetime moments for people. And I also really love the fact that I can express my creativity through photography and through taking photos and kind of like creating my own art for my clients. Like it's, it's my art, but it's my client's stories being captured through it. So if you think of like a painter or someone, they might paint pictures of what's meaningful to them but it might not be portrayed to other people because, you know, it's meaningful to the painter and that's basically it. And as a photographer, I think it's really cool that you're able to tell a story, but it's your client's story and you're able to express that through your own art form. So that's kind of my why and and really why I started photography in the first place for all of those things that I just listed. Now I want to ask, where did photography start for you? Where did it all begin? Maybe for you, it was doing senior photos in high school. Maybe you took senior photos for your friends. Maybe photography has always been a hobby that you recently picked back up. Maybe photography has always been something that you've always defaulted to. So maybe in hard times or, you know, just when you are bored, you default to photography or If you are in a friend group, maybe you're the default photographer. Maybe you're always taking pictures for people. Um, That's kind of why or where it all starts. So I want you to think about like where it all starts for you. Whatever it is, whatever that starting point is, I want you to keep that in mind as you're thinking about your why in photography. Keep in mind whatever it is that got got you interested and sparked your interest in the first place. So again, I want to ask, why did you choose photography? Was it for the community? Honestly, maybe it was for the money. Like sometimes photography pays really well and maybe it was just for part-time money. Maybe photography is a creative outlet. Now I want you to not lose sight of why you started as you continue to grow your business. Um, A lot of the times business owners lose sight kind of of why they started everything because, you know, maybe their business grows so much or it doesn't grow at all and you lose sight of where it all began. 
and the root of it all. So I really want to encourage you to think back to that starting point and now look to where you are now. You can appreciate the difference between when you first started and where you are now, but you can also look at where you started as a grounding point to keep you humble, to keep things on track with your original goal and purpose. I'm not saying that you can't change your goals and change your purpose as you go throughout your photography journey. But what I am saying is don't lose sight of those original goals that you have, especially if you haven't achieved them yet, because those goals are valuable. And that's kind of what you had in your head as you were starting all of this. So now when it comes to like just to switch gears a little bit, I want you to think about like what your goal is in doing photography. So for me, my goal was always to go full time and to help other photographers. Those are two things that I knew I really liked. Um, I have mentioned this a few times on the podcast before, but when I was working for that nonprofit before I was full time in my photography, I was actually training like beginner photographers to be better and to learn Lightroom and learn how to shoot in low light and, you know, teaching them camera settings and all that different stuff. So that was kind of where my interest for helping other photographers started. And my business really has transitioned into full-time wedding photography, but also full-time photography educator. Literally, I have this podcast now, Um, but I want you to think about like what your goal is in photography for you specifically. Maybe it's becoming full-time or having just a good side income. Maybe you don't want to go full-time, which there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you just want side income to kind of supplement other things in your life. Maybe you want to do photography just for the sake of trying something new. I know I do that a lot. Like for now, I'm kind of in this like phase with my nails where I'm like, I want to just try something new and try to do my nails by myself. But maybe that's what photography is for you. You're just trying something new to see if you like it. And honestly, that's okay. Um, Maybe your goal is to book more consistently and that's going to be our goal in photography. It's always a good idea to keep this goal in the back of your head when you start to feel discouraged or things feel out of reach, just keep yourself grounded and keep yourself with this goal in mind as you do literally everything in your business. So after chatting about all of these things, I want to give you a bigger picture. Your why in photography is going to keep you motivated and it's going to give you a purpose as you navigate through photography. So your why is motivation. It's purpose. It's telling you what you need to do, where you need to go. Your goals are going to help you understand what tasks you need to be doing to achieve your goals and ultimately to achieve your purpose or achieve your why. So your goals are supposed to help you get towards your why and to help your why actually happen. So kind of think of it from a client's perspective It's going to be so incredibly obvious if you as a photographer don't really have a purpose or a why as to why you're doing photography. It's going to be obvious the difference between a photographer who has a why and has that figured out and the photographer who doesn't. So that's the first thing when clients are reaching out to a bunch of photographers, they're going to want to look for someone who's driven, someone that feels like they know what's up. They have life in check because they have a why as to why they're doing photography. So that's going to be something that clients are looking for. Clients are going to tell apart the difference between someone that has drive and someone that's kind of just floating along in their photography journey. And, you know, they don't really know where they're headed and they don't have a reason why they're doing photography. So clients can tell the difference. Your why is going to help you serve your clients, but it's also going to help keep you in check when you start to get caught in the mundane or just like the boring parts of your job. So that's going to be something that is really helpful from a client's perspective, but also from the photographer perspective. You are establishing your why first to serve your clients, but also to keep you in check and keep you motivated as you do 
those very random and just like mundane everyday things that photography entails. You're going to want to very clearly communicate your why to your clients so they understand your heart behind it. Um, if, if your clients don't understand your heart behind your business and where it all started, why, why you're doing this, it's going to be a lot harder for them to connect with you. Clients want to feel like they're booking a real life person, a real life photographer. So by you not having a why or not clearly communicating your why in your business, it's only harming you. So I really think that having this purpose and this why as you create a photography business, I think that's going to help a ton with retaining and booking clients. When it comes to booking clients, truly it's all about connection. So sharing your heart and your why behind photography is going to help you foster that connection between you and a potential client. And it might even be the difference between someone booking you and someone not booking you. So someone finding you and thinking that you are the person that they want to book above someone else. So whether you're just starting your business or you've been in business for like 15 years, I want you to reevaluate why, why am I doing photography? Like what, what is my purpose in doing this? It's so easy to get lost in the everyday things to get lost in your photography to the point where you lose sight of like, wh- why did I start this? You know, like why, why did I even get to this point? I think keeping yourself grounded in that sense is it's really just going to help you overall in your business, even with your mindset too, like having the mindset of being driven and having goals that why is really going to help with that too. So I want to address if you feel like you've lost your purpose or you just feel like, I don't know, like your why just isn't there. I I really want to address this specific topic. I want you to think back to where it all started right away. Like I was saying, go back to where your drive for photography began and remember those emotions of you shooting your first session and the session that you shot when you looked at the photos afterwards and you were just absolutely obsessed and you loved the final photos. I want you to think back to that session and that kind of spark that you felt with that specific session, that's kind of where your why begins. It can, it can start a little bit before or after, but a lot of the times that's kind of like the realization point, or it's almost like the hook, like you're absolutely hooked on photography now because you've created a result that you really love. And for, I even remember a session for me, it was like in this really pretty open golden field with a couple that, um, I just asked, they were just my friends and I just asked them to model for me. And I remember thinking like, yeah, like this is what I want to do. I absolutely love doing this. You almost have this high of after you finish the photos, just seeing the result. It's just, it's just insane. And so that's what I want you to remember is that kind of emotion from when you first felt a spark from your photography I do want you to remember that it's common to have ebbs and flows and ups and downs as you journey through photography. So sometimes you absolutely love your work. You love everything that you're putting out. You love your edits. And then sometimes you just get in this funk where you're like, I just am not vibing with my posing. I'm not vibing with my end results. Um, I'm not loving my edits. And that's common. Like I, I don't necessarily love every single shoot that I do. But what I do love is delivering valuable photos to my clients that they love and they appreciate. That's, that's where I love every session. So I might not love how every session looks aesthetically, but I love how it makes my clients feel afterwards. And that to me is enough reason to get o- get over it and not focus so much on do I love the photos, but rather focus on do my clients love their photos. So I want you to remember that there are ups and downs in photography and those ups and downs are part of the refining process. So those downs that you have, 
that is part of your photography being refined, your business being refined and challenged. And I promise you're going to come out on top and you're going to be able to look back and learn lessons from that experience and not only learn lessons, but you'll be able to know what, what to do, what not to do and how you can improve based on some of those downs that you had you know, maybe a month ago or however long ago, ups and downs are normal and they're going to refine you and help you become a better photographer and a better business owner. So I want to kind of touch on a few times where I felt personally like I was stuck, like my photography didn't have purpose and times where I just truly felt very lost in what I was doing as a photographer whether that's technically or just from a business perspective or just like, you know, confidence wise. So a few times where I felt really stuck was first being when I was constantly comparing my work to others around me. I know a lot of people say like, don't compare yourself to other people, but I just really want to emphasize that point. Um, There were a lot of people when I first started, a lot of people around me were very experienced and very talented. And because I was in my first like year, year and a half of doing photography, I just wasn't at that point yet. I didn't really know what my style was like. Um, I, I didn't know how to establish myself as a brand or anything like that. So I was constantly comparing my work to other people, comparing my prices to other people, Comparing the clients that I would book, the people that would come in the door and want to book me, I would be like, why aren't these clients like the clients that this person has? Which is totally wrong because, you know, the clients that come to you are the people that want to book you. So like, who cares if other people have different clients? Anyway, so that is a time where I felt really, really stuck. Another time was when I shot a lot of my sessions in the middle of the afternoon. I know this seems like a pretty easy fix, but at the time, I really had no idea that shooting later in the evening was going to help me figure out my style and shoot the type of photos that I wanted. So that was another time where I felt really stuck and it was just really hard for me to move past that. Um, Another time was when I didn't know my style or I didn't know the vibe that I was going for in my photos. It's really important to have a why in your business, but it's also important to have your style established kind of, it goes hand in hand with your why. And the reason that it does is you, you can't like go and shoot if you don't know what vibe you're going for. If you don't know what style you want to shoot, if you are just going and shooting and you're just kind of like shooting whatever it's going to be really hard for you to figure out like, what's my style? Like what type of poses should I be doing? What lighting should I be looking for? When you can put into words your style and put into words the poses that you want or like the type of feeling that you're going to get from the photos, that's going to help you establish your style. And I think not knowing my style was really hard because I I knew my why, but I didn't know that my style that went along with that why. Another time that I felt stuck was when I was so focused on like Pinterest poses and I wasn't really focused on posing my clients custom to themselves. So it was really hard when I would look through Pinterest for an hour before a session and I would show up and I didn't remember any of the poses or I did all the poses, but they didn't end up looking like the ones that I saw on Pinterest. Like, you know, their, their laugh wasn't as genuine or whatever it is that looked off about those photos. So I think Pinterest, it's not necessarily a bad thing to use for inspiration, but, um, it does kind of make you feel stuck because you're so reliant on Pinterest that you're no longer relying on your creativity, which is something that probably drew you to photography in the first place. That creativity is what drew you to start photography. So when you lose that side of photography and that creative aspect, it really just starts to feel a lot different. It probably is not as enjoyable. So that's a time that I felt really, really stuck was when I wasn't focused on posing my clients custom to their strong suits, custom to the things that made them comfortable. Um, So yeah. Another thing that made me feel stuck was when I wasn't booking consistently. And when I didn't book consistently, I didn't 
let that be like a learning opportunity for me. I let it become a, is there something wrong with me or is there something wrong with my work thing? So that was, that was really hard. Um, and when you're at that point, you're not booking consistently. And sometimes it's not even a you thing. Sometimes it's a time of the year thing. You know, sometimes people don't book in February. Maybe they book in September. So sometimes it's not necessarily a you thing. There's, there's always things that you can improve on. But for me, I just felt like, oh, there's something wrong with my work. Oh, my photos aren't good enough. Or, oh, I'm not a good enough business owner or whatever it is. So, um, that's something that was really hard for me. And I think going back to my why wanting to serve my clients and capture meaningful moments for them, that was something that I needed to just communicate better as people were reaching out to me. And that's honestly part of the reason why I wasn't getting booked as much was because I wasn't communicating that why. And that's something that I didn't know at the time that I needed to be doing. And kind of to go along with that point, I also was getting ghosted quite a bit. And I think getting ghosted really just makes you feel stuck and it makes you feel, you know, like, what, what am I doing wrong? Like, why aren't people booking me? So when you're getting ghosted, I want you to go back to your why and even go back to a goal that you have for your business. Um, and just kind of let that be the solution for you being ghosted if any of these things are something that you relate to or things that you're like, oh yeah, I'm going through that right now. Um, I want you to think of solutions to each of these things. So the first thing that I said was comparing my work to other people around me. A good solution to that would be unfollowing the people that you compare yourself to or limiting your consumption of other people's work and other people's content. So then you're not as heavily influenced by what this person went and shot yesterday and the wedding that this person is shooting tomorrow. Um, that's going to be a good solution to that. Maybe, um, shooting at high noon. That was something else that made me feel stuck. A solution to that is shooting at night, obviously. So thinking of solutions to the things that make you feel stuck. And if it's not a solution, at least give it a try. Um, that's really going to help clear your head and get you back on that purpose and that drive that you feel as you do photography. That the reason that you started it all, always bring yourself back to that. Um, even in hard times when you're comparing yourself to others, bring yourself back to why did I start photography? What are the things that I love about photography? And is it really worth me being so upset over this comparison or so upset over whatever it is? No, it's not because doing photography is something that you value and it's something that allows you to be creative and think outside the box. Um, sometimes it's therapeutic. Sometimes it's just a good coping mechanism. So just remember that as you're going through hard times in your business, ups and downs, remember why you started it all and where it all began. That is all that I am going to say on this topic. I'm going to leave that there. Um, I hope you guys have lots to think about when it comes to your why and just starting your business. If you are starting right now, or if you've already started your business, think back to when you first started and those things that motivated you then let those things motivate you now. If you guys could rate and review my podcast, I would absolutely love that either on Spotify or Apple podcasts. Um, If you're not going to rate and review me, that's fine. I'm just happy that you're here and that you're listening. Make sure you check me out on Instagram. My username is at Cassidy Lynn, which is linked in the description. And I also have a bunch of free workshops coming up. So those are going to be linked in the description of the podcast. Most of it takes place in my Facebook group. So you'll just want to be a part of my Facebook group and you'll get access to all of those workshops. Thank you guys so much for listening and I hope everyone has a great day. Expose my mind to clarity Oh, my spirit shudders Capture the moment, oh, to keep my sanity The wisdom rushing in So much clearer now Getting a little bit higher 
step I take, I'm getting good. Getting a little bit better. I'm climbing to the top. Never gonna stop. I'm 